In the cold winter, when the weather played tricks and the world started freezing up, Norfield Manor was thriving day by day under the Viscount's watchful eye. And there was a little shake-up in store for this winter. The servants were grumbling about gearing up for winter so early. Enter Dana, this upbeat servant girl, beaming as she showed the others the snowman she made, claiming it resembled Grandpa Percy. The others couldn't believe Dana's carefree spirit amidst the hectic situation. Dana reassured them that the head butler must have good reasons for the early prep. She even suggested they take a break first. As they played with the snow, another servant rushed in, sharing the news she heard about the head butler retiring. This bombshell left Dana in shock, prompting her to dash into the house. Inside, Grandpa Percy, the head butler whom Dana affectionately called Grandpa Percy, was explaining things to some servants when Dana called out to him, running to catch up. Breathless, she sought confirmation about the retirement news, and sadly, Grandpa Percy confirmed it. He explained his plan to leave after winterizing the manor. Dana still couldn't grasp the suddenness of it all, questioning why he was leaving so abruptly. The thing is, Grandpa Percy had already shared this with Dana, but she hadn't really listened. Feeling down, Dana sought answers, and Grandpa Percy reassured her that his replacement would be even better. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, the news of Grandpa Percy's impending retirement became the hot topic, given his longer tenure than anyone else. Concerns arose about potential issues arising once he leaves. However, one servant felt relieved upon learning that the new head butler graduated from the Royal Butler Academy, believing he would be entirely different from Grandpa Percy. Still, Dana, who had just arrived, wasn't ready to accept that. Dana was the one Grandpa Percy brought to the manor when she was a kid, making it much harder for her to come to terms with his retirement. So, Dana, with her plan to make Grandpa Percy stay longer, created some chaos in the manor by breaking some items, hoping Grandpa Percy would have more work to do. However, as Dana was about to cause more trouble, Grandpa Percy caught her by the hand. They had a conversation while Grandpa Percy packed his things. Dana explained that everything she did was an attempt to prevent him from leaving, but Grandpa Percy informed her that he was the one who wanted to retire. As he had grown old, staying longer would be a nuisance to the Viscount. He also offered Dana advice, but that only fueled her anger. She declared that she wouldn't care about him anymore and left Grandpa Percy in confusion. The day Grandpa Percy left the manor arrived. Everyone was sad with tears on their faces as they bid farewell to Grandpa Percy. However, Dana wasn't there. Grandpa Percy could only hope that Dana would understand one day. While trying to keep herself busy, Dana suddenly began to cry. She rushed out of the house to say goodbye to Grandpa Percy. But unfortunately, she was too late, as he had already left the manor. Furious, she vented her anger towards the snow, throwing it recklessly. Oh no! The snow she threw accidentally hit someone right in the face. As the man wiped the snow off his face, he questioned if that was how people were welcome there. In a panic, Dana asked him if he would like to meet the Viscount. To her surprise, the man revealed that he had just started working there that day. As Dana escorted him inside the manor, she couldn't help but reflect on the fact that she had inadvertently made the worst first impression on the new head butler. It turned out that the man she had thrown snow at was Grandpa Percy's replacement. The new head butler asked Dana for her name distracting her deep in thought. Dana tried to stay calm as she answered him. He also posed other questions that heightened her concern, making her wonder if she was already on his blacklist. Upon reaching the Viscount's room, the new head butler expressed his anticipation for working with her, leaving her pondering what kind of person he was. However, for Dana, no one could ever replace Grandpa Percy. Viscount Nordfield gathered all the servants in the hall to make an announcement and introduce the new head butler. Oscar, the new head butler, then introduced himself and greeted the others, expressing that he would need their assistance. The female servants were captivated by Oscar's handsome appearance, but Dana couldn't shake the feeling that she was on Oscar's blacklist, judging by the way he stared at her. The new head butler from the capital became the topic of conversation for a few days. But as everyone followed the same routine every day, it didn't take long for interest to wane. It turned out that Oscar was quite strict. Once he began working, he complained about almost everything the servants did that seemed insufficient for him. 
Not only did he increase their workload, but he also shortened meal times, claiming there was too much chit-chat during break. Oscar didn't stop there. He continued to impose more rules on the servants. In their room, the servants began confiding in each other about Oscar's rules that were wearing on their nerves. While having a handsome head butler seemed like a good thing initially, it turned out that his constant nagging was tormenting them. They felt that Oscar's rules were often impossible to follow, leading them to compare the current situation with Grandpa Percy's time as their head butler, which they found to be much better. Meanwhile, Dana was tasked with bringing tea to the Viscount's room. There, Oscar was in conversation with the Viscount. Dana paused for a moment as she overheard Oscar mentioning how the previous head butler was too lenient, lacking proper rules or discipline among the staff. The Viscount then informed Oscar that he would entrust the matter to him. Leaving the room in anger, Dana couldn't believe that someone like Oscar, who knew nothing about Grandpa Percy, was talking like that. The next day, in Oscar's working room, Mary, one of the servants, seemed to be asking for permission to meet her family who had been far away, and now they were there. However, Oscar didn't grant her permission to leave work, stating that it would disrupt the workflow as she hadn't informed him in advance. The other servants peeked through the open door, feeling pity for Mary. Suddenly, Dana burst in from behind with a piercing look in her eyes. She told Oscar to be more flexible in his approach to work, explaining Mary's situation. At first, Oscar maintained his stance that being flexible would lead to irresponsibility. However, after Dana spoke her mind and also volunteered to take on Mary's responsibilities, Oscar eventually granted Mary permission to meet her family. The other servants were proud of Dana for daring to speak up. That day marked the first in Dana's conflict with Oscar. Since that initial conflict, Dana consistently voiced her complaints whenever Oscar attempted to make changes in their work routine. Despite Dana providing reasonable explanations, Oscar persisted in believing that the best course of action was to implement the changes. After an exhausting day of conflict with Oscar, Dana was eager to demonstrate to him the best practices she had learned from Grandpa Percy's teachings. Intent on studying the journal he had left her, Dana eventually fell asleep in the process. Unaware that her life was now in jeopardy, embers from the fireplace ignited the paper on the ground, resulting in a significant fire. Dana awoke in confusion, detecting a strange smell. As she surveyed her surroundings, she was startled to find the fire had already surrounded her, leaving her trapped. Dana sat in the corner, praying for someone to help her, not wanting to meet her end in that manner. Suddenly, the window opened and a snowflake landed in Dana's hand. In the midst of the fire, a hand reached out to Dana, pulling her to safety. It was the head butler, Oscar, looking visibly concerned as he inquired about Dana's well-being. The fire wreaked havoc in the manor, and Dana's friends kept her company in the room since she was still in shock and pale. They asked Dana if she was okay, although she wasn't truly fine. She reassured her friends that she was okay. Then one of her friends informed Dana that Oscar was the one who had saved her. Suddenly, the door opened and Oscar appeared. Before leaving, Dana's friends whispered to her, suggesting that she should thank Oscar for his actions. The situation became awkward, and Dana wasn't sure what to say first. To her surprise, Oscar apologized to her, acknowledging that he should have checked the fireplace more thoroughly, putting Dana in a dangerous situation. Dana couldn't believe what she was hearing, but before she could fully comprehend the situation, Oscar informed her that he would allow Dana to take a few days off to rest. As Oscar prepared to leave, Dana sprung from the couch, asking why Oscar had defended her instead of using the incident as an excuse to terminate her employment. Oscar stopped and turned to Dana, asking why he would fire her. Nervously, Dana admitted that she had been very hostile and felt she was getting in the way of his work. However, Oscar saw it differently. He considered Dana's actions as helpful even though he never explicitly asked for her assistance. He explained that Dana's knowledge of the place was beneficial to him, and he didn't perceive her as an obstruction. While walking to the door, Oscar clarified that he wasn't narrow-minded enough to fire someone for sharing their opinion. He expressed that they simply had different working styles. Those words left Dana stunned, feeling regret for her previous actions towards Oscar.
Now Dana realized that from the beginning, Oscar had been taking his work seriously and inquiring about how things were done there. It dawned on her that she was the one being unreasonable, driven by her longing for Grandpa Percy and her determination to challenge the new head butler. She acknowledged that she had put herself in an embarrassing situation. A couple of days later, Dana returned to work, but she seemed different. Her friends noticed that something was off, but she consistently claimed that she was okay. However, whenever Oscar appeared, Dana would hide somewhere, unable to face him. But one day, as Oscar came across the budget plan for the mansion, he encountered some parts that he didn't understand. When he inquired with the Viscount, he learned that, as the previous head butler handled it, the Viscount had no idea either. Oscar then attempted to ask the other servants, but they were also unfamiliar with it. However, they suggested that Dana might know something about it. Meanwhile, Dana was actively avoiding Oscar. However, when Oscar suddenly appeared behind her, she was startled, thinking that he was following her there. Oscar got straight to the point and asked about the budget plan. Dana explained it to him so that he could understand it better. Unexpectedly, Oscar then asked Dana to work with him, as he needed her by his side. This came as a shock to Dana, as she had been trying to avoid him, and now she found herself having to get close to him. Having trouble adapting to the new environment, Oscar believed it was best to ask Dana to be his assistant, given her longer familiarity with the manor. He sincerely expressed his intention to improve the manor, making it difficult for Dana to refuse his request. Eventually, Dana agreed to assist Oscar for the short term. And so, they worked together. Dana provided advice when Oscar needed it. Apparently, the dynamics between them changed, and others who observed them were surprised to see how they had become so close. In their room, Dana was interrogated by her friends who were eager to know what had happened between Dana and Oscar. They remembered how Dana had resented Oscar before, but now they seemed close. They assumed that romance had started between Dana and Oscar from the fire incident. Not wanting her friends to misunderstand, Dana clarified that she was just assisting Oscar. Hearing this, one of her friends felt disappointed that there was no romance as they had been planning to ship Dana and Oscar together. However, Dana's friends expressed their concern that Oscar might make things difficult for Dana. The next day, while the servants were having lunch together, Dana noticed that Oscar didn't finish his meal despite advising others not to leave any food on the plate. This puzzled Dana, and she wondered why he did so. After the lunch break, Dana visited Oscar's workroom. To her surprise, Oscar was intentionally feeding a small bird with the leftover food he hadn't finished. Oscar shared that he found the bird by the windowsill, and it appeared to have injured its wing, so he brought it in to treat it. Learning something new about Oscar made Dana realize that she didn't yet know him as a person. After finishing her work to assist Oscar, Dana felt exhausted and rested her head on the table. Suddenly, her stomach made a loud, growling sound. In embarrassment, Dana quickly explained that she had skipped her dinner due to working for a long time. Upon hearing this, Oscar offered to help by cooking her some dinner. At the dining table, Oscar served Dana the food he had cooked. Dana looked amazed and quickly tasted it, praising Oscar for preparing such a delicious meal. In that moment, Dana thought that working with Oscar was not so bad. However, just as she had that positive thought, there came shocking news that she would have to go on a trip with Oscar. In a shocked expression, Dana asked Viscount Nordfield what he meant by saying that she had to go together with Oscar. Apparently, Viscount Nordfield had received a letter from his only daughter, Lady Julia, who resided in a neighboring territory. Lady Julia's mother had passed away when she was young, and in an effort to fill the void, Viscount Nordfield provided her with everything she could ever want. He felt sorry for Lady Julia, who had grown up to be a cheerful and naive girl, but in a less favorable light, she could be challenging for the servants. However, Dana was the only person she couldn't push around. Vice Count Nordfield explained that Julia must have become so attached to the current location that she didn't want to return. He considered it a potential inconvenience for Countess Rubin, where Julia currently resided. Consequently, Viscount Nordfield requested assistance from Dana and Oscar to bring Julia back home. Dana asked why she and Oscar should go together, but after hearing the reasonable explanation from the Viscount, Dana couldn't help but accept it. 
She thought to herself that maybe it would be just fine. Viscount Nordfield also informed them that they would be passing through Enoch and Hudfisher. Upon hearing that, Oscar appeared startled and looked worried. And so, the day of departure had arrived. Dana reassured herself that everything would be fine, although she felt a bit anxious initially. As the carriage moved along, Dana attempted to start a conversation, but Oscar, with his cold demeanor, asked her to travel in silence. This annoyed Dana as she had tried to be friendly. However, Oscar seemed strange with his hand trembling uncontrollably. As they arrived in Enoch, Oscar was about to lead them to a place to stay, but Dana told him that she wanted to stroll around first. Although Oscar warned her that it would be dangerous as it was already dark and the shops must have closed early, the stubborn Dana refused to follow Oscar. She left despite Oscar's attempts to stop her. After visiting some shops, Dana seemed to have nowhere specific to go. While walking alone, someone tried to approach her from behind. It turned out to be a stranger attempting to rob her. Using all her strength, Dana struck the robber with the shopping box she had bought and managed to escape. While running, Dana reflected on Oscar's earlier warning, regretting her stubbornness and not heeding his advice. As she almost reached the crowded place, a carriage was approaching from the other way and about to hit Dana. Just in the nick of time, a snowflake appeared, reminiscent of the fire incident, and once again, Oscar saved Dana from the accident with the carriage. However, this time, Oscar couldn't conceal his power anymore. He used his magic to rescue Dana. With a concerned look on his face, Oscar asked if Dana was hurt. Dana assured him that she was fine. Seeing the snowflake slowly melting in her hand, Dana wondered if it was magic and pondered why Oscar could cast such spells. As she was about to ask Oscar about it, his face turned pale, and he urgently told her they needed to go quickly. Just before he could finish his sentence, Oscar collapsed to the ground. Dana was shocked to see this, and when she touched Oscar, his body felt as cold as ice. She tried to shout for help, but the people around just watched them in stunned silence, shocked by what was happening. Far behind the crowd, the coachman attempted to call out to Dana and reach them. The power that can ignite a fire without wood and create cold ice in the middle of summer is a mysterious force known as magic. Those who can harness this power are called magicians. While some magicians use their abilities for good, the majority wield magic to fulfill their own desires. Consequently, the public generally views magicians with skepticism and negativity. In his childhood, Oscar was mistreated by the neighborhood because his mother was a magician. They went so far as to chase him away. Dana was taking care of Oscar, who was still lying in bed unconsciously. She couldn't believe that Oscar could use magic. Recalling the moment of the fire incident, she considered the possibility that Oscar had also used his magic to save her. As Oscar began to regain consciousness, Dana tried to help him sit up, informing him that they were in an inn as he had passed out earlier, and the coachman had assisted them. Oscar still appeared worried and explained that he really didn't want to use his magic there, in a place that held memories he didn't want to revisit. Hearing this, Dana expressed her gratitude to Oscar for saving her despite the risk of passing out. However, Oscar tried to get up, stating that they should leave that place soon. As he wobbled, Dana caught him, suggesting that he should rest more. However, as she touched Oscar, she noticed that he was shaking. Suddenly, the coachman burst into the room looking pale, informing them that they had trouble. People were coming to the inn, looking furious, carrying staff and items for self-defense. Among them was an old woman who claimed she had already told Oscar never to come back there again. Oscar, still panting, replied that he was just passing through. However, the old woman insisted that she believed Oscar was returning to take revenge. Dana intervened, asking why they were bringing up Oscar using magic as if he meant harm. The old woman in rage revealed that the village had been brought to ruins 20 years ago, all because of Oscar's mother, the Ice Witch. This revelation shocked Dana as she tried to comprehend the situation. The Ice Witch was notorious for making the northern region tremble in fear. She earned her name because whenever she faced rejection, she covered everything in ice. Dana couldn't help but wonder if Oscar's mother, the Ice Witch, was the same person. Oscar admitted that it was true. 
Even though Oscar had nothing to do with his mother's actions, the citizens were furious to see him there, as if nothing had happened. They started to approach as if to attack, but Dana stood up for Oscar, stating that he had done no harm to anyone. Unfortunately, those people wouldn't listen to anything Dana tried to say. In this chaotic situation, Dana was suddenly reminded of a situation that somehow resembled hers. People had told her that she was a cursed child, leading to her being sent off to the orphanage. She recalled how Grandpa Percy had encouraged her not to worry about it. Gathering her courage, Dana covered Oscar and stated that what they were saying was unreasonable. She emphasized that Oscar was the head butler of Nordfield Manor. Dana asked what harm Oscar had done to them, assuming that they were just venting their anger on him, making them no different from the Ice Witch. She also explained that they were under orders from Viscount Nordfield and that any delay would displease him. Instead of calming down, the citizens became more enraged after hearing that. One of them came closer to Dana and was about to hit her, but Oscar quickly intervened, stopping him from harming Dana. Oscar looked angry as he held the man's hand. Oscar stated that he was aware of what his mother did, but he wasn't like her at all. However, he warned them that if they threatened him or the people around him, he would no longer hold back. Oscar used his magic to freeze the man's hand as a warning. He also told them to stop there, stating that he would leave for sure, all the while healing the frozen hand of the man. As a result, the crowd finally left them. Now only Dana and Oscar remained in the room. Dana expressed her concern, stating that she understood how Oscar felt. She also asked if Oscar would share his story. Oscar paused for a moment upon hearing that from Dana. He then began to open up about his mother, who initially considered him a burden but started paying attention to him after discovering his ability, teaching him things. In an effort to meet his mother's expectations, Oscar immersed himself in learning magic. However, all his efforts were in vain. The feudal lord pursued his mother and she ultimately abandoned him. That was the moment he began questioning why he was born and whether or not he should have been born in the first place. Hearing those stories, Dana was fired up, telling Oscar not to say such a thing. She encouraged Oscar, assuring him that he had done nothing wrong. Remembering what Grandpa Percy had told her, she believed that everyone has the right to be happy. While holding Oscar's hand, Dana stated that she was sure Oscar would find happiness too. Suddenly, Dana released Oscar's hand, looking awkward. Oscar also revealed that he wanted to live, which was why he left the village and sought employment. Seeing happy faces from the people he worked for gave him a sense of accomplishment. This experience motivated him to apply to the academy. As he began working hard and applying what he had learned, Oscar admitted that he was starting to feel happiness in the life he had chosen. He expressed his gratitude to Dana, acknowledging that she had always been there to help him. Upon hearing this, Dana couldn't help but blush. They finally left Enoch and stopped at Hudfisher, enjoying some moments together. A few days later, they arrived at their destination to pick up Lady Julia. They were amazed by how the manor looked. It seemed like Nordfield Manor was nothing compared to it. While entering, Dana caught a glimpse of Julia in a garden. Dana approached and called out to her. Julia was surprised, wondering why Dana was there despite having sent a letter to her father, stating that she wanted to stay there. They argued with each other until Julia asked who the man beside Dana was. Oscar introduced himself as the new head butler and explained their purpose. However, Julia looked down as she stated that she wanted to stay there. As Dana and Julia continued to argue, Countess Rubin came from behind, noticing the commotion. Oscar quickly greeted Countess Rubin, explaining their intention to pick up Julia. Countess Rubin reassured him that Viscount Nordfield didn't really need to worry, as Julia kept them from being lonely. Julia hugged Countess Rubin, expressing her desire to stay there. Countess Rubin then told Oscar and Dana to give them some time, suggesting they take the opportunity to rest as well. It couldn't be helped. Oscar and Dana had to stay there for some time, but Dana already missed her bed at home. Suddenly, Oscar suggested reminding Julia of the things she enjoyed at Nordfield that could make her want to go back home. Thinking that it was a clever idea, Dana got excited and began to formulate a plan. For plan A.E., Dana tried tempting Julia with Nordfield's food specialties. 
However, it turned out that the food she ate that morning was prepared by a skillful chef at the current location, capable of cooking various dishes from around the world. Since Julia could have the same quality of food there whenever she wanted, there seemed to be no compelling reason to go back home. So, Plana failed. They attempted Plan B, reminding Julia of the sounds of her home. Dana wholeheartedly sang a song while Oscar played the violin. However, Julia perceived it as a weird song and told them to stop. It turned out that Dana couldn't sing it properly, so Plan B also failed. They moved on to Plan C. Dana attempted to evoke a sense of guilt by reflecting on how their parents had protected and raised them up until now. It seemed successful, as Julia started to shed tears in her eyes. Julia then ran away from there. Dana initially thought it was a success, but instead of asking to go back home, Julia was looking for Countess Rubin. This marked the failure of Plan C as well. Despite trying various tricks, Dana and Oscar couldn't seem to move Julia's heart. Dana felt frustrated and began to think they should just take her by force. However, Oscar suggested focusing on the reason Julia wanted to stay. They then had a talk with Countess Rubin, who shared her thoughts that perhaps Julia was trying to fill the void left by losing her mother in early childhood. Julia's behavior was also a cry for attention. And for her, Countess Rubin was a maternal figure, though not her real mother. This was the reason Julia wanted to stay. Upon hearing this, Dana realized that Julia was missing her mother. To convince Julia that she could grow if she overcame that difficulty, Dana needed Oscar's help. Although initially perplexed, Oscar saw Dana smile as she stated that they would use his magic. At first, Oscar was unsure if his magic would be helpful. He also worried that it might ruin everything, but Dana reassured him that his magic had saved her twice, so it was all about his mindset. Oscar then agreed to Dana's suggestion. With the preparations ready, Dana approached Julia, who was having tea time with Countess Rubin. Julia looked annoyed and stated that she wouldn't go back to Nordfield, no matter how Dana tried to persuade her. But Dana assured her that this time she would like to show Julia something. Countess Rubin also encouraged Julia to follow Dana, and so Julia asked for permission to leave. They walked through a forest and Dana told Julia that they were going to a place where she could ask whatever she wanted. Curious, Julia kept following Dana, and as they almost reached the place, Dana informed Oscar through the communication magic tools that Oscar had made. Receiving the signal, Oscar unleashed his magic and placed his faith in Dana's plan, anticipating its success. As Dana showed Julia the place, an imaginary Nordfield manor, Julia was surprised especially when she heard her mother calling out her name. She asked Dana if she was dreaming, but Dana assured her that it was what she wanted. In that imaginary Nordfield manner, based on Dana's memories of how she saw Julia and her mother there, sharing times together, Julia started to recall her moments with her mother in their home. She realized that her mother had always loved her. After that imagination faded away, Dana reassured Julia that her mother was always there in Nordfield. She also emphasized that if Julia cherished the happy memories and moved on, she would find many more precious things, just as Dana had learned over time. Dana believed that it would be the same for Julia too. She also mentioned that if Julia remained sad forever, it would make her mother sad too. Stating that they would help Julia, Dana asked her to go back together to Nordfield. In Dana's embrace, Julia cried and agreed to go back. Before returning to Nordfield, Julia bid farewell to Countess Rubin. They had a pleasant journey after departing from Countess Rubin's manor and safely reached Nordfield Manor. As they got off the carriage, Julia received a warm welcome from her father, Viscount Nordfield. The final person to alight from the carriage was Oscar, and Dana surprised him by extending her hand to assist him. It appeared that her gesture touched Oscar's heart. Dana spent the next few days catching up with work, and everything returned to normal. However, recently, Oscar's attitude had changed for some reason. Whenever Dana tried to greet him cheerfully, he would just nod in response. Even when Dana offered her hand to help, Oscar would avoid it, stating that if he needed her help, he would ask. Dana looked perplexed by Oscar's demeanor, as she thought their trip had brought them closer. Realizing Oscar was avoiding her, Dana couldn't help but feel annoyed. She wondered if she made a mistake that turned Oscar off. 
However, one of her friends, Maria, came up with the thought that Oscar's sudden change in behavior was because he had fallen in love. At first, Dana couldn't believe it. But as she recalled the moments she shared with Oscar on the trip, she blushed all over her face. Her friends suggested she test it out to confirm. Though she felt it would be embarrassing, Dana considered her friend's suggestion. As Dana walked down the hallway, pondering what she should do, she coincidentally met Oscar. Dana then put on an act as Maria had suggested. She pretended to fall in front of Oscar, who quickly caught her. When she opened her eyes to see how Oscar would react, he responded with a death stare and asked her what she was doing. Dana couldn't help but feel embarrassed, so she ran away and apologized. Left alone in the hallway, Oscar still stood there. But oh boy, his ears turned all red. So I guess Maria's suggestion was a success? While running, Dana contemplated the past events. Suddenly, she stopped and realized her feelings toward Oscar, that she was in love with him. At night in her room, Dana couldn't sleep, wondering if Oscar kept his distance because he found out about her feelings even before she did. Thinking that he must have prioritized his work, Dana considered that her presence might be making him uncomfortable. After some thought, Dana decided to also keep her distance from Oscar. Meanwhile, in his study, Oscar was scribbling something on his table. He poured his heart onto the paper, admitting that in order to distance himself from his mother's shadow, he had decided to steal his heart. However, Dana always expressed her feelings so honestly, and that was like a refreshing breeze to him. At some point in time, Oscar started to feel happy when he was with her. But that was all. However, that trip changed everything. Oscar recalled moments when Dana encouraged him, telling him the things that he wanted to hear. It was the strongest emotion Oscar had felt in his life, to the point that Dana's place in his heart grew bigger and bigger, and he could no longer control his feelings. Oscar wondered if it was a good thing or a mistake. The following day, in an unexpected encounter, Dana avoided Oscar, leaving him without words. Observing the scene from the window, Viscount Nordfield summoned Oscar to his room. There, Viscount inquired if something was amiss, noting Oscar's apparent low spirits. Oscar calmly assured him that physically he was fine and nothing was wrong. Sensing something deeper, Viscount shared his own experiences, acknowledging the profound loss of his wife as the worst event in his life. He imparted the wisdom that certain things, once changed, could never be brought back. To avoid regrets, one must strive to do their best in every moment. Oscar reflected on these words, realizing that his actions were merely cowardly excuses to distance himself from Dana. Faced with genuine feelings for someone for the first time, fear gripped him. In the early morning, as Dana strolled through the hallway, a snowflake approached her, guiding her outside. There, Oscar awaited, appearing flushed and nervous as he called out to Dana. Summoning his courage, he offered an apology, acknowledging that he had inadvertently caused her pain, despite Dana consistently providing comfort. He then revealed his feelings, leaving Dana in a state of bewilderment. Drawing near to Dana, Oscar confessed his affection, expressing that he wished to remain close to her. Tears flowed down Dana's cheeks as she confessed to Oscar that she believed he was avoiding her because he knew about her feelings for him. In response, Oscar's face turned crimson, rendering him speechless. Dana eagerly embraced Oscar, finding solace in the realization that their feelings were mutual. They exchanged declarations of love, holding each other close. Following this revelation, numerous changes occurred. Dana's friends playfully teased her, and she had to share the romantic tale with Julia. However, Viscount Nordfield issued a gentle reminder about the importance of diligently performing their duties before they knew it, spring had arrived, bringing about many changes. Despite the transformations, Dana was no longer fearful. She believed that by cherishing precious memories and giving their best each day, a brighter future awaited them. And that wraps up this story. Catch you in the next one. Thanks a bunch for watching. Hope you had a blast.